Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Dark Season 2, Episode 3, it is called Ghosts. So, full spoilers for the episode, as always. And if you were watching the live stream last night, uh, when this came out, and you heard me say you won't get Dark till Wednesday because Connor fell asleep, <laughs> we're recording this during the day. <laughs> How dare you slag me off like that when I'm not around. <laughs> Connor had raised an emergency recording midday because he felt bad. Uh, so that's why you get dark at a reasonable time. Uh, so yeah, episode three. I would say this is this episode both has a nice emotional kind of character arc for for Claudia, but it also has some pretty big mythology bombs that are just kind of casually dropped on us. Uh, yeah, there's a scene because there's a scene you know quite early on. Uh, Agnes Nielsen, uh, Tronti's father, Yulik's grandfather, uh, grandmother rather. Um, she yeah, she has a scene with with uh, Doris, which is uh, Egon's wife. Where and it was implied last season that they they were maybe starting to have a relationship, and we see it's progressed here in the fifties. And uh, you know, Claudia, young Claudia, walks in on them, and it's like, did she could she tell what was going on? You know, did did she understand what was happening? Kind of thing. It's unclear. She definitely did. Definitely. Well, I mean, it leads to a scene with her and Tronte, where she's like, Tronte, okay, can you show me it now? And he just whips. Whips out his dick. That's yeah. that's the scene. I mean, I say that really flippantly. I mean, he looks very nervous as he's doing it, but <laughs> like, yeah, he, he looks pretty uncomfortable. Yes, um, Claudia is all. Seems to be someone who's always in charge. She 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 commands the situation. Apparently, she does. Um, but um, well, we know they have an affair la later in life. So um, I guess I mean, the, I guess the one thing about this show that is a little bit unrealistic is how many people in their families all seem to all seem to inherit the same house that their parents had. Like every single family <laughs> in, in present day has the house their parent had. Uh, I mean, it's not that uncommon. It's not that uncommon, but it's just. It's also not this common either. I, I think it's probably more common in a small town like this. Yeah, uh, maybe. Because it's a relatively small town, from what we can gather. Um, Do you know what? I would I would buy it maybe more if some of the older versions of the characters who are like you know senior citizens now were still living with them, but they're all sh shipped off to the hospital in old folks' homes. It's just like no, it's my yeah, house now. But... Get out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can't wait to do that myself. <laughs> Well, you plan to move back to your old house, <laughs> right? Parents? No, no, shift. no. I'll just rent it out. I'll just rent it out. Okay, okay. Oh, do they own it? Can... Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. She can go to a home, and I'll rent it. Out. <laughs> anyway, uh, so so Agnes, it was a scene. She's just she's she's walking through the woods, and she's at the the cellar door that you know we saw a lot of last season. You know, where the, where the, the chair and the, the room in the eighties was, and she goes down, and old Claudia is there, and. She knows who it is, and it's like, wait, whoa, whoa, what are you dropping on me, show? This came out of nowhere. Yeah. And they know who each other are, and just, again, equally as casually, it's mentioned that Noah is Agnes's brother. Yeah. I don't think it said brother at this point, but it, 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 would just, it, it was, just said, you know, you're fat. Um, something definitely made me think brother in the scene. I don't know what the exact line was, but there was definitely... Like, I came out of this scene thinking, wait, is that her brother? Like, I, I definitely... I remember them saying, oh, you know, you're linked by blood, you know, your family. I remember that part specifically in part of the, the, you know, in this scene here. That's, that's where um, my main jumped anyway. I mean, I don't know if there was a specific reason why it went to brother in that scene, but I definitely cause I, did. Because I didn't... Maybe I missed something, but I went... I was... Brother was, an, was one of the you know, things I considered, but I also thought, well, you know, given the time travel nature of this show, could be a father or a son. No, who knows? Or a great great grandson, or something of that nature. But exactly. Yeah. Um, no, I came out of this scene thinking brother for whatever the hint was, um, and it was confirmed later on. Uh, yes. But th this came out of nowhere, and it was kind of a big deal. I was like, well, okay, oh, so we're actually getting context for who. Like, no, it's just not some third party anymore. Like he is actually he's part of the families. He's connected to one of the families. He's the the younger end. Or the older end, you know what I mean. Like I meant younger in the, as in the time period. He's in the younger time yes. period, <laughs> but he's older. Uh, and it's like okay, so all of a sudden, Ulrich's great uncle <laughs> is, is Noah. Like the the plot yeah. thickens. Uh, more and more so, I think we need a we need a tree. We need like a family tree that's like we're building to adding to as we as we go. Yeah, because this show. relates him to obviously you know you, all that lot, and and also Jonas as well. 
Oh, sure, yeah. Uh, no, you mean, yeah. That's really some too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this yeah. makes Jonas his great great grandson. Some of that. Well, okay, so Tronis has. Sorry, no. Tr- uh, uncle, not not son. Uncle, uncle yeah. Great great uncle. Right, so Tronis his nephew. Uh, Yorick's yeah. his great nephew. Mikkel's his great great nephew. So that makes Jonas his great 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 nephew. <laughs> <laughs> But it's there. There is a con- there is a family connection. It's tenuous at this point, admittedly. But hey, burned by blood. <laughs> what can we say? Which no, but given the the things that, you know uh, Claudia was saying here, uh, that seems to be a, an important theme. Oh yeah. Well, one of the things she cl- clearly says is that is that there, there clearly seems to be some kind of war happening through time between Team Adam and Team Claudia. Uh, and later on, when we get to the other scene where Claudia, uh, so where Agnes goes goes to the church and has a scene with Noah, we we then get the implication that at one at one point, actually that's the later scene that implies this. But regardless, like we're talking about this is one big thing. At one point, Noah actually was in the same side as Claudia, and and switch because he says at one point to her later on, "I'm not just one of your pawns anymore," and she says, "No, you're Adams now," or something like that. Um. Yeah, because the one in the church was, you know, was him saying to to her that, oh no, you know, hey, I know you used to be on Team Adam, but he's not going to just welcome yeah, you. Yeah, you've 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 picked your side. But then the thing, the newspaper clipping that Claudia, old Claudia, gave her uh, to give to herself, which hasn't happened by the end of the episode. She still might do it. She still has it at the end of the episode, but she does show it to to Noah. Yeah. And although it is debatable if this is actually something that Claudia still wants her to do. I would say. I, I think it is because yeah. it's the only way it happens, right? K- kind of, yeah. Because I mean, we find out at the end what this is. Is it's a, it's a newspaper report from the eighties? Uh, I think it was the eighties. Um, because that was the. And I almost in the eighties because that was the last place we saw Claudia, old Claudia, before this scene where she gets sure. where she's killed. Uh, it's her, like you know, sh- you know, unidentified woman, dead body found in woods, and it's her, yeah. her photo. Um, and it actually, because I actually skimmed through the episode because I watched it last night, thinking we were recording last night before Connor fell asleep. Um, right, so I skimmed through it again. And what's really interesting about skimming through the episode again, knowing where it goes at the end, is it actually made the scene. I actually almost watched the whole scene again uh, in the, the the bunker between old Claudia and Agnes, because her Agnes's reaction when she sees it, and then the way they hug afterwards actually plays way better, knowing what she's just seen in the, the page. That makes sense, yeah. Uh, and uh, Claudia says. You know, you, you, my mother will make you happy if you let her. You know, so whether well, or not she realised that as a kid, and that's why she knows to say that, or if it's something she discovers more of as time goes on. Um, she, she definitely knows about it by the end of her yeah. life. Yeah, uh, and she's Which... certainly okay with it. She's okay for her mother to be happy. And that's because oh, because that's the other thing that plays out through this episode, again, skimming through it again, is that this episode for old Claudia, for you know, for old age Claudia, is basically going through like all the people she wants to talk to one last time. She goes to see her dad in the 50s. That's like one of the scenes in the episode. And they make a point, uh, and I have never noticed this before. <laughs> I don't think maybe it was mentioned last season once, but uh, her, her her eyes being two different colors, and uh, you know, Egon says, "Oh, that's very rare, just like my daughter." You know, young Egon. This is this is young man Egon, yeah. and she's like, "I'm so sorry. You know, you 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 don't deserve everything that happens to you, but sometimes the good ones get hit it's, the hardest." Yeah, no, it's uh, the world doesn't deserve you. The world doesn't deserve you, and sometimes the good ones get hit the hardest. And he just gets really uncomfortable. And if you don't, if you're not going to explain who you are and why you're saying this, then you have to leave. And she just, uh, she does leave. She, and it, she just says, "I'm sorry," and leaves. But it's this beautiful uh, sequence of scenes here because it goes from this to the eighties, where old Egon is telling middle-aged Claudia that he's got cancer. That's the scene yeah. it goes to after this, and then after that, it comes back to the fifties, and it's young man Egon coming home to speak to his young daughter Claudia. And she says something very similar, the same thing that old Claudius just said to him. And it gives yeah. him this kind of pause, this moment of, like, that's weird. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, so good. We should talk about one of the other big mythology things that this episode kind of drops in, again, relatively casually, is the idea that, oh no, they know the cycle's coming to an end and they're preparing for the next one. Like, it doesn't just start completely afresh for them. There is something tangible to carry across yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, someone did say the cycle's ending last episode, because we did talk about that, but yeah, this episode, it does seem to be... Because one of the things that Agnes says to, to Noah is, like, this is a peace offering, and in return, I want to, be, you know, join Adam's side again before the start of the next cycle. Uh, 
well and again well that's because she's been a double agent and actually still you know team claudia or she's actually making a heel turn here's left to be seen yeah we can speculate on that all you want yeah um, but it's very interesting it's like what benefits does this have like do you have to be aligned with Adam to keep your memories? Like, is there some, you know, are these people the only ones who kind of remember the previous cycle? Maybe, but like, this is the thing. They definitely seem aware that, okay, hey, in the next cycle, we're going to do this, this, and this. You know, they've got plans mm. for the next cycle. So, uh, it can't just be completely fresh. Otherwise, there'd be no point in having plans. I feel like maybe the way the time travel works is that the people who are traveling through time still kind of that or it's actually a lot less metaphysical than we're thinking and it's just okay they know that you know they they know the the zero zero day is the day of the apocalypse right and you know 33 years before that is the end of the cycle and then just the next day is okay the 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 new cycle kind of so to speak they're just in the next phase um what if it's more when the cycles reset, the the I don't know how to say this, and I'm not sure how it works even. But just stay with me here. What if it's that when the cycle resets, the time travel in the bridge resets back to the original years that it started? Yeah, yeah, that was something I was thinking might happen. But the people who are actually have already travelled through time still stick around, and they have to wait until next year when the bridge opens up again because now it's time for it to be active maybe or something like that uh which is maybe why they need preparations before a new cycle begins because oh we need to make sure we're in the right time and place otherwise we're going to be stranded for a while or something i don't know um but no like so agnes wants to be on team adam before the cycle starts again that is very interesting and again this scene really told me there was a war being fought through time between yeah. two people, between Claudia and Adam, and again, who is Adam? I don't know. And because the episode ends with you know, after we get this scene of like Noah having old Claudia at gunpoint, presumably in the eighties. Uh, maybe the maybe the newspaper clipping, if you look at it closely, will actually say that, confirm that well or not. But not that it really matters. That, that or it is in the fifties, and it's just a, a an old clipping from a newspaper that she's brought, you know, from the future as proof. Oh sure, yeah, maybe. Uh, just a, an archived thing. Maybe I'm going to go help Garrus because he's got his clock on a jacket that's high enough, but he's kind of dangling. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll, uh, so he's crying now. I'll I'll, yeah. I'll be about a second. You you talk about um uh, the ending where he says that people get what they deserve and it ends with a photo the photo of Claudia in the wall. It's very sad. Yeah, I mean it, it's sad, but it's it's said with um something interesting because. It doesn't feel like a picture of, you know, like a murder board sort of style picture of, okay, we're tracking the players and, you know, one was just taken. This is a proper framed photograph. Uh, it feels you know, like a genuine, like like, like, a, like a family portrait someone would have on the wall. Yeah, um, it was making me think if there was like others like that for a lot of the other people. And I wonder if it was just a case of the people from the 50s have these types of portraits because the casual digital photos that the modern families have didn't exist then. So people had more like proper portraits as opposed to, or frame photos. Maybe or... it was more the way it was framed and hung on the wall, like rather than just, because I mean, he's time traveled. He could have still just come from, you know, assuming he's oh, somewhat like Noah's time traveled at least, even if for some reason Adam hasn't, although we're pretty sure he has. Um, you know, he could have just taken a, printed off a copy in the future and brought it back and stuck it up as like a you know a murder board style thing if that was the intention yeah but i mean it's just happenstance maybe they just they, where they got it from was a photo they had high up in their house <laughs> and they just I mean, left maybe. it in the frame it was in i mean it could, sure. it, it could just as easily be that like for all we know there's other frame photos kicking about in this room of some of the family it members be, yeah. especially from that time period uh i could definitely see that so I mean, yeah, Claudia's journey in this is really is is really kind of touching um, because even middle aged Claudia tries to like connect with with Regina a little bit, and uh, Regina kind of blows her off and says she's got a German exam. Also, I have a question just just for I know at least a few Germans watch her, her coverage of this. I have a question: when you say you're taking a German like class or a German test, I assume you mean what we mean when we say we're taking an English class and that you're analyzing and do, doing you know deeper. Literally. Yeah, like literature that. and things like that. Because uh, obviously, when we say we're taking a German class, we mean we're just learning to speak basic German. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I assumed as much. I, I assume, but just in case it's not, just in case Ger- when they say they're taking a German class, it actually means something a bit more different and specific that we wouldn't think of because it's just, we are just, you know, maybe what we call English, they call, you know, language skills or something. I don't know. <laughs> like, Yeah, we, we're we weird in, with English because obviously we just call it, oh, it's English, but it's actually split up into literature and language as very different subjects, really, um, mm. in the way they're they're done uh it's kind of strange. yeah uh so no really touching and claudia um goes to see tan house at the at the shop uh and he kind of explains to her that yeah he wrote the book but he really brings up this idea of the the paradox the cycle where he wrote the book because someone gave him the book i mean it turns out it was actually old claudia <laughs> who gave him the book in the 50s yeah. and he so he got to see the book before he wrote it so he only wrote it because he saw the book um, and this kind of actually, so obviously the first time before the cycle started, things had to be different. And because of the way that we're, there's characters who are preparing for the next cycles, it says to me that every cycle is at least a little bit different, that there are changes happening every single time. There must be slight changes, yeah. Yeah. Because I think, I feel like they mentioned how many cycles we were on, uh, like that, but maybe they didn't. Maybe that's just something in my head now for some reason. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe they did. I, I, don't, I don't recall a number though. Um, but old claudia even says at one point and um, this will be over soon in four days again doesn't matter what time period we're in it's in four days so yeah sticking with that. that that's what i was getting at with the you know the the easier route through the cycles so you know claudia in in 54 right uh, you know she gets to the end of that cycle on the the 27th of june 50 you know that that's the end of it she obviously she carries on living she you know she, you know 28th of june she's still there is that, and that's still technically that's the start of the next cycle. Okay. So to her, you know, you know, when they're making preparation, when some of them are talking about preparations for the next cycle, does that necessarily mean okay, you know, this is like a, a hard reset? And we're gonna you know, remember things and do things differently, or is it some some level of no, no, we're gonna prepare for okay, it starts over, and we're gonna prepare when we go into that bit. Yeah. Um. Yeah, make a whole lot of sense there. What I, <laughs> what, what I will follow up with is, I wonder, like, I think there is, the fact that we're counting down to an apocalypse says there's some sort of hard defined thing that makes it a new cycle. But I will at least speculate the idea that a new cycle means that we start interacting with the new version of the characters before they learn things again, at the very least. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah, so it's it's funny that a lot of this speculation we we're talking about. Okay, you know the reset of a cycle. It reminds me of a the ending of another Netflix show not too long ago. That I uh, I won't say for the sake of spoiling that yeah. show, but uh, it it does remind me a lot of of the potential of where that ended. I th- I think that's a hard thing. I think there's a hard thing that makes it our, makes it the start of a new cycle. The fact that we've got a countdown to this apocalypse, I feel that there are there are going to be changes. Uh, and I don't know if it's just that some characters get to avoid them, or is it just a simple case of they've left clues from themselves because, although it's a new cycle, or does the old cycle still carry on in some capacity into the new cycle? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> yeah. We'll find out. Um, but yeah, anyway, so yeah, Middle East Claudia goes to, goes to uh, Tannhaus, and he explains this idea of like, where does the begin happen? Is there a beginning? Um, is there an ending? Is it just a, a constant loop that's never going to break? kind of thing and obviously again we've said this before i i believe the story of this show ultimately is the breaking of the loop like somehow yeah. yeah somehow that's what we're building to is the idea that we have to the, break out the loop the only real question is is that the end of this season or, or the next right you know because there is a potentially interesting thing in if that's the end of this season and the third season is okay the loop's been broken but now what um i was still betting the end of the show uh, I mean, I would be more likely, I agree, but, you know, I wouldn't rule it out. I would still bet on it, because I feel like there's, because like what we were saying last episode, I think there's a lot of fascinating ideas to de- delve into by doing a new cycle. Like, what does the new cycle mean, and what does that mean we get to re- do differently than the first time? And, you know, and it'll get really confusing, because then we'll start talking about, okay, this event, but the version that happened in the second cycle in yeah, season three Yeah, are we going to versus... see a lot of the events from season one again in season three, but just slightly differently? 
Yeah, I wonder how they get around the kids having age. Although I wonder if they'll just reuse some footage when they can because the thing's not changed yet, and then they'll the new things will happen that'll change it. Uh, <laughs> and could do, yeah. They'll mess with it. You know, Back to the Future Two style where we'll get like yeah, you know, um, or <laughs> no, no, uh, so uh, but yeah, so Claudia sees Tanhouse and she she uh like is like okay so. Because he's like, oh, I was expecting this day to come. I have to, I have to show you how to use the machine that you've you've you've, you've just received from last episode. And he's like, but what's funny is, is that I like, I would never have known how to show you this if someone else hadn't taught me. And he and he mentions Jonas because you know because he says the old Claudia in the fifties because we see like her giving him because she gave him the blueprints blueprints last season to build it. Uh, where did she get those from? Who who started the blueprints? Well, <laughs> who knows? We'll find out. Um, but she and he's like, "What? You have to tell me how to like work this." And he's like, "Ah, oh, no. I mean, that was never going to be me that does that. Someone was going to tell you because you tell me in the future, but I don't know who." Yeah, she she mentions that someone else, you know, that that he told her that someone else told him about about it, so she knows not to tell him herself. And it's older Jonas who tells him, uh, and we saw that yeah. last season, and that makes me go, "Well, who taught Jonas?" <laughs> It, was it was it was it was it old claudia in the tapes did, did she explain it to him so then again we have another loop we have another thing that only exists I because mean, the machine itself is only is a loop because it only exists because he saw the blueprints and so you know to copy off of that's true that's true um do we get some sort of prime like original timeline that we're going to see someday of how this came to be maybe although i kind of hope not sure i mean, I mean it just depends what they want to explore like do, do they want to go into like how the loop starts or do they want to go into just how we break it you know like yeah, yeah i mean they could do if they wanted to that's not to be honest, that's always the least interesting part for me with the loops like how does it start uh, you know it, it almost doesn't matter how it got into the loop and how it started it's just okay no this is where we are now and how do we get out of it? well no it depends because if there's like an emotional reason if, if they if they they can sell me on the idea that the loop started because a character made a choice and why did that character make that choice what was the conditions like what caused all this pain and all this looping and all, all this this turmoil that the, the world's going through because some i don't know let, let's say it was you know adam right let's say adam you know before he was disfigured and whatever like, let's say did, did he do this out of jealousy or spite like what was the the emotional reason why something happened or, or was he just obsessed his whole life with trying something you know is that a regretful thing it's not that he seems a regretful character from what we've seen of him yet but you know i'm yeah. just there could yeah, I'm, be, I'm not saying it's yeah. impossible that, that it could be interesting and there could be something good there, but just inherently it's usually the least interesting part of the Loops story to me. Compared uh, to know, what, other, what other shows are we talking about or movies are we talking about with Loops? Oh, there's been... Christ, what, <laughs> what's up with Loops now? I've... I've <laughs> I feel like you're saying that as if it's such a common thing that you see all the time. That's always the least I, I interesting mean, part of loops. <laughs> I mean, how many times in the last year have we talked about things breaking the loop? You know, Shield, for example, you know, we talked about that break, you know, being a, a fixed loop uh, in, in just in the last year or so. What, what else is there? Because I feel like we've talked about at least three or four different TV shows. Um... I mean, they're coming to a blank now, naturally. But, you know, the, 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 you know, the, you know I, I can picture you saying, oh, no, the interesting part is how do we end the loop? How do we break the loop? Sure. That's, that's something you love to say. You've said about a good few different TV shows. I'm not saying, I'm not changing my mind. I still think that's an interesting part. I'm just, I think the start of the loop could also have a potential interesting story. It can, yeah. I'm, I'm not saying it can't. I'm saying it's usually less interesting to me because I'm not as concerned about why they started usually well yeah about this is the problem though is you're you're thinking of nitty-gritty reasons like the logical reason why the loop exists i'm thinking what does it reveal about a character that we know now if they chose to start the loop right and what no, that no, means and that. whatever the ongoing story is at the point in the show we're at like you know in present day how how, do, how does their motivation and like you know is, is the reason why claudia is trying to fix it do we find out that she and, and you know actually is the one who started the loop like that's why no, older claudia I, is like I, I determined to fix it with this logic I, I don't disagree with what you're saying it's just on a personal preference the mystique of just the loop being the loop is something i quite like you know, uh, for, you know, just okay. for me personal enjoyment. All right. Can I finally face this Claudia part of the end? I, I feel you like I've, I've I've said, oh, so Claudia goes to Tannhouse like five times because you keep veering me off into 
nonsense. More interesting things. No, because she she uses the machine. We see her put in the the the. I can't remember what they were using. Something from the the plant. Some uranium radio, something radio, or radioactive other. thing. Uh, and she, I'm like, oh, where's she going? Or when is she going? I, I still say where. I know what I'm talking about, but I always say where because it's just the right. It's just it feels right to say. Um, but when is she going? And sure enough, she, you know, middle aged Claudia is in present day, and she she's just seeing how how uh, Regina is and. Regina, you know, she takes her, her headscarf off and she's clearly sick and, you know, Claudia's yeah. watching this from a distance and she's just clearly upset by it and it's really heartbreaking. Um, and I think what's so great about this is Regina in season one and present day never felt like that important a character, but her mother's become such a big deal in this show. Um, towards the end of last yeah. season and certainly early this season. Uh, oh, she, definitely, yeah. She's become such a huge factor and I kind of like that some of the families aren't as important in present day and because of that like when we went back to the 80s for the first time or the 50s for the first time like yeah we we, we definitely thought of jonas's family and ulrich's family as the two main families that were the most important ones but the more we delve into the 80s and the 50s it's like well no some of these other families are more important as well they're, they're just important maybe more important in different time periods yeah, uh, yeah that's been kind of that's been kind of fascinating to kind of you know swim through those waters and wade through it and figure out yeah who's who um so heartbreaking ending uh but we have to go back to the noah old claudia scene because there's one so he kills her and one of the things that, that agnes said to him uh, and i bet those people in the comments that are already screaming at us because we, we kind of didn't mention this earlier but don't worry i have not forgotten about these two important details so agnes yeah. said to him she has the missing pages on her uh so if you kill her you know you'll be able to get them you just take them yeah yeah um so first of all missing pages to what Exactly. Yeah, it implied, it implied to me that at the end of a diary, uh, maybe, presumably yeah. with records of the end of the cycle, as to so maybe no one actually knows the end of the cycle perfectly. Because... I didn't. I didn't jump to end of the cycle. There's certainly there's details of 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 events or something in these pages because he pulls them out. Well, at least one of the pages looks like a table. Uh, there's some pages that look like drawings that like you would get in the, the you know the the Tannhaus book, uh, yeah. detailing things. Uh, but he he reacts very shocked. He says the name Charlotte, which is obviously important because we have Charlotte in present day, um, yeah. and he is kind of disturbed by what he finds. He because he says like, "Oh no, it can't be," or something to that effect. He is disturbed, and yeah, we know that there's a connection between him and Charlotte to some extent because he said to 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 young Elizabeth, and I'll get into the Elizabeth Heller controversy from the comments in a minute. Uh, he said to young Elizabeth, uh, this used to be your mother's, this used to be Charlotte's. And she said that last season. So we know that there's at least, he. Un he's, uh, I mean, he's aware of all the characters really, but he's uh, in some level is, is, is connected to Charlotte because he has this item, this, this pendant uh, that she had. Yeah. And so who is Charlotte exactly to him? Um, is he Charlotte's father? I mean, she, she thinks her parents died when she was young. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, it's not necessarily. You know, uh, uh, you know, because and obviously Charlotte, you know, not she's not in this episode, but last episode she was looking at the photo. Is this going to be her discovering her father, kind of thing, uh, which murkies things up, which would be have to be after he time traveled, presumably, because obviously he originally comes from. Yeah, so you'd have to have time traveled forward, had the kid, and then time traveled away again. Which, by the way, is assuming, and this is assuming, of course, uh, and I'm saying this because this is pre-built. This is while they're building the bridge. But this is assuming, of course, that him and Agnes do come from this time period originally. I'm assuming they do, but just in case, I'm pointing that out that it, they could swerve us later on with that. They could do. Um, it's possible. Um, just to, you know, the reason I said why I thought the the pages might be the end of the cycle is, um, like I said, uh, I don't know if there was something specific. Just the way um, I think it was the way Adam and him were talking. About it, it felt like the end of a diary. Um, and it definitely felt like the, the last pages was the ending, which is why, you know, uh, chronologically is why I'm saying the end of the cycle. And I'm wondering if that's part of how they're remembering things um, across cycles. They're kind of passing the diary back to their younger selves. Um, yeah, if they, maybe and, if they go you know, back. They don't quite know the ending, maybe. Maybe, maybe they go back to, like, I don't want to say pre-cycle per se, because I, I don't know if they can do that, but like, you know, you know like, and leave, leave the hints. Yeah, I don't know if it's necessarily the ending. Uh, it, it could technically feasibly be any part. Like, cause to, to me, it the, could, yeah. because to me, the, the thing that was so shocking to him 
it feels like to me he discovered something about the past rather than i mean this is again it's confusing because we're talking about time travel but the past in the sense that he's discovered something about charlotte that he didn't know as opposed to how she dies in a few days time it felt more like that to me no, uh, well see i disagree it felt like he reacted to equally it could, could have been that but it also equally could have been something she is going to do rather than that something that happens to her okay possibly but here's the thing the way i read this reaction and again this could be completely wrong once we actually get the reveal but speculating is part of the fun here yeah to me the way the reveal played in his face which is good acting by the way because <laughs> i'm reading yeah. i'm reading this much into it to me it played kind of like when um jonas realized that Mc Mc his father right and i'm not saying that charlotte's his mother i'm saying something like that where he's just realized like a way that she connects to him or connects to someone else that he cares about in a way that he never understood or knew about before like it's revealed something that's happened because of a loop that he didn't know about that's possible yeah right which might tie into like something she does in the next few days at the end of the cycle perhaps but that'll yeah. ripple back to another time or, or whatever but like that's the way i read it I, I read it as he has discovered something that he doesn't understand about the time loop that's been playing because Noah, Noah, for the most part, has always felt like this mysterious character who understood what was going on more than we did. Yeah. And this felt like he just had the rug pulled out from under him as opposed to just something's going to happen in a few days that's... Well, see, you know. that, that's why, for me, I think it still plays because it feels like he's so aware of the cycle and everything that happens in the cycle, right, is what it feels like most of the time. So for me, oh, she's going to do something that he didn't know about, uh, that he you know, he didn't see coming for whatever reason. Um, to me, that still plays with the same reaction, along the same logic of how you're reading it. Yeah, um, so, great moment. Obviously, we'll delve into that stuff as the season goes on, um, I'm sure. Um, yeah. Another big notable thing here, just to wrap up Noah's side of this, is that he does not tell Adam. He lies about the pages. Mm, Adam says, did, you, did she have the pages? And he says, no. Or he shakes his head. Uh, so he and here's the thing like, I was thinking like maybe they'll do some kind of thing where Adam tries to, or not Adam sorry Noah tries to redeem himself but um, here's the thing Noah was complicit in kidnapping children and experimenting on them which resulted in their deaths in season one so I don't think he can ever really truly be redeemed <laughs> like no he, he has done some pretty heinous stuff uh, so I mean unless he ends up fixing the cycle and all the kids are alive again <laughs> I guess in that sense maybe there's it's not impossible. It's the closest to redemption. I mean, he still did the things he did. We know he did, but... But then he undid them, so... Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, so... Yeah, that's fascinating. So a lot of fascinating stuff from that, that side of the plot this this episode. Um, oh, definitely. E Egon, of course, we've mentioned the scene where you go see Claudia, but he's also... Um, he, he gets the, the, the vinyl, right? With the lyrics. And he's like, oh, that's what you said to me. And he goes to see old Ulrich again, and he's like... You said this to me like in 1953, but it only came out like last year. What, 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 what's going on? <laughs> what the yeah. hell? And you know, he just he opens up. He's like, "I'm Ulrich Nielsen, and I'm from the future." And of course, of course, Egon knows this name, and he's like, hey, "What?" And I, I got really excited because later on, you know, he's back at his place and he's looking through police records, and he looks at the re the report about Mikkel showing up at the station saying that he's from the future. Or it doesn't. I mean, Mikkel didn't say that at first, but no. But he says his his father was was Ulrich. Yeah, Ulrich, and he's a, he's a police officer. He works here, and he he starts like you know, it starts clicking together in his head. No, I mean, maybe not clicking is the right word, but it's like he's seeing he's seeing sparks kind of almost bring it together, even though he doesn't want to believe it because it's so you know. But he's, he's he's kind of I think he is there. He's just not ready to believe it. So he goes back. So he goes to see uh, uh, Ennis, uh, and and he wants to see uh, Mikkel, who's now Michael, and she won't let him. Makes up some excuses. Uh, it sounds like she's giving him pills to sleep. She kind of tries to lie yeah, about it. There's always asleep. He's like, what in the middle of the day? Oh, he was sick. You know, whatever. Yeah. Um, but he does see some sleeping tablets before he leaves. And he says, oh, you got a photo of the boy? And as soon as he said that, I, my eyes just went, he's going to show the photo to, to Ulrich. Oh my God. Yes. Yes. Do it. Do it. Do it, you son of a bitch. Do it, you fourth beautiful Ghostbuster, you. Um, and he goes to Ulrich again, and he, he, you know, he pulls out the photo, and he says, oh, when you first arrived, you, you, know, you said this and that. And uh, he's like, so last year, a young boy came out of the police station, and I'm like, yes. 
Yeah. And he rips out the photo. And Yorick, you know, loses his shit. He starts strangling him. He's like, you knew he was here all Everyone along. Everyone in the madhouse starts reacting and screaming. Some of them yeah. choking themselves. Yeah. And obviously security came in and, you know, Egon's like fine later. But it's it's re- it's like a really big moment. And it, like he's like, oh, he came to this time period kind of thing. And Yorick, Yorick as much as the, he still knows who he is, he's definitely, he's he's been in a hospital like this for, for decades now. He's... He's not, like, in, in his best frame of mind. And we see that because young Egon goes to visit him in the, the 50s, and we actually get to see the actor uh, playing middle-aged yeah. Yorick again. Um, which, which meant this time I got to check the credits and see, yes, it is two different people. Yeah, well, people have confirmed it in the comments. It is two different okay. people. Um, I, saw, I, was, I was checking in the comments, because obviously in the comments they're labelled by the, the year they're in. In the uh, comments? The character. Uh, sorry, in the credits. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Yeah. So no, and he doesn't. Uh, Yuri doesn't say. He, he says his name after he leaves. He's he's, he's too like because he, he's got a straight jacket on. Like he's he's know, out of it. He's having a breakdown. And who can blame him? He ended up in the fifties, nearly beat a child to death, and then he finds out, of course, that the uh, young uh, Helga came oh. back because uh, that's how we start the episode. And uh, Helga won't speak to his mother. He's because so he was missing for like however many months this was between uh, this season and last and he won't speak until noah comes by he's like the you know the local priest essentially and makes him speak and it's like so clearly he's, he's got this bond now with noah um but when middle-aged claudia goes to see helga who's in a hospital now because of what happened in season one in the 80s he he gets kind of out of it but he says you must stop adam like he doesn't but whatever noah's been drilling into his head throughout his life he's he, stuck yeah he he's now came to the conclusion that that what he's been doing has been wrong and he or alternatively we're seeing a noah from a different point of a cycle who is already against adam or or earlier in the cycle who was against adam because we know he was on claudia's side at one point for the sake of not making this confusing i am going to assume that that was in a previous cycle and that we have not seen that this version of noah that's fair i just wanted to throw out the possibility because I'm going, I'm going to go and operate under the assumption right now that we have only seen ca- these characters time traveling through one cycle. We have not seen previous cycles of characters. No, I I agree, but there is no guarantee that Noah was not on Claudia's side at the start of this cycle. Maybe he's on. Oh, true, you know, maybe true. he's on her side at the start of every cycle. True. Well, I, I was reading this definitely more as as Helga because I think old man Helga who died last season definitely gave me the impression that he regrets the things he did for th- so I, I definitely think that yeah. the noah that made him work for him was was evil noah with adam and helga's having a, a face turn to go back to a wrestling term um uh but in wanting to he's like claudia you have to stop adam and it's funny because we know that she ends up essentially in this war with adam and it's like this is the start is, of is that. this the start of that war i think it her. is I, I think middle-aged claudia is the story of how this war starts from her perspective yeah it's such a weird thing with this loop, isn't it? Because for her, this is the start of the war, but Adam's already in this war against her at this exact moment. Yeah, but then older Claudia's been going back and forth, so it has. she's still been fighting it in the 50s and so on, so it's like... She has, yeah. Uh, it, yeah, it's interesting how this, this battle started for, at different times for different people. But then again, we don't know what time period Adam comes from. We don't know. So... He may be from later in the timeline. Oh, which actually, other lines I want to point out from the... I keep going back to this scene, but there was so much in this scene with uh, Noah and Claudia when, when he shoots her, right? Mm. And he has that moment of hesitation as well, I might I point out. Um, uh, is... Oh, I forgot what line I was going to say. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I know what it was. What it was. Right, he quotes, or she quotes rather, Claudia quotes almost word for word... The paradise that Adam is promising you is a lie, which is almost identical to the future stuff with Jonas, where there's where he says the future that they're promising you is a lie. Yeah, I caught that. It was very interesting. Um, and it was paradise specifically. Both the people in the paradise, future yeah. are believing this paradise, and apparently so does Noah under Adam's you know, rule or supervision or whatever. Yeah, it, it seems Adam is perpetuating the idea of a paradise in the same way that Elizabeth is in the future. 
Yes. Uh, it is a good time to talk about Heather. Uh, so I got very confused in the comments of last episode when it went up because someone said, uh, wait, is Heather Elizabeth? And I went, who's Heather? What are you talking about? And a couple people responded to it and I said, wait, did I just say a wrong name at some point? And then people kept debating, like, you know, is this actually Elizabeth in, in the future? I'm like, yeah, it clearly is. I think the episode made that very clear when it yeah, pointed yeah. out. And then finally someone said, yeah, you, you called Elizabeth Heather a couple of times. And I'm like, okay, that explains it. So... <laughs> okay apologies i called elizabeth heller once or twice for some reason i don't know why yeah but pete that... does this occasionally on a lot of shows and <laughs> it's usually easier just i just go yeah I, I know who he's talking about usually in context it's yeah. fairly obvious who he's talking about but... But the way it was in the comments, it was implying that there was someone else named Heather. And I was starting to think, wait, did they call her Heather in the future? And I, we've not picked up on it, it's a different name. Or I got really confused for a second. But it's not actually confusing. It's just Elizabeth. There's no Heather. Yeah. Heather yeah. is a lie. I think in most shows, when Pete does this, and you know, let's say in context of who, who we're talking about, it's, it's obvious. always clear. Yeah, yeah. With this, when there's so many people with potentially different identities or revealing identities in different time periods... Yeah, maybe we need to be a bit clearer. Maybe I should have corrected it. <laughs> Did you even notice? Yeah, but I didn't bother saying anything because, like I said, you do this so often that I just let it slide, usually. Mm. Oh, well. <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I thought about Egon. Uh, although we kind of wrapped up his, his plot, I think. Um, did, did we wrap up all the plots? Uh... Because it was it was fifties Claudia, eighties Claudia, uh, Egon in both, and of course, uh, it was actually Egon's kind of noticing his marriage is, is kind of going down the toilet. He, he knows that she feels distant from him, um, and he even yeah. sees them kind of drinking together at, at, at night. And uh, he kind of knows. He kind of deep down he knows. He does. He tries to bring her flowers, but she's not there, and you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good. Egon seems like a pretty good guy. As much as Ulrich hates him, <laughs> Egon does seem like a pretty decent dude for the most part. Who for the most part, yeah. Gets a lot of bad luck, um, which is a shame. So I, I think what's interesting as well, just to go back to the, the, the transitions between um, you know, all, all the Egon Claudia scenes that happen back to back through, through the different time period and through the different versions of each character, is I, I do really like the idea that Claudia goes back to middle aged Egon to to sort of say goodbye because she knows she's dying soon and in the 80s egon knows he's dying soon and goes to middle-aged claudia there's a nice symmetry mm -hmm. uh to that which is really beautiful and, and then you sort of cap it off with the young little girl claudia with with him uh at, you know in the earlier days of the relationship so yeah there's a really nice beat to that and <sighs> that, that was playing with our heads i <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've seen a few people say the four is one of their favorite episodes so i'm quite excited i'm actually quite excited just because i i've been saying this every episode but at the end of the episode you know netflix has the image for the next one the thumbnail it comes up oh, on full yeah, screen go on. On again PS4. i don't see it it's in the present day bunker and you've got charlotte and peter with hannah and older jonas together i am very intrigued by this 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 meeting of i i, I sense knowledge. answers coming up I, 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 yeah, I sense a really honest conversation maybe about some time travel nonsense uh, with these mm -hmm. characters. And Charlotte might, like, learn and discover a lot. As, as well, Peter, maybe, uh, depending on how much they know. Um, so maybe, maybe that's what's in the pages, that Charlotte knows about all of this and she's going to learn in the next episode. Maybe, maybe, maybe? Maybe, maybe Noah doesn't realize Charlotte actually knows things. I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I want to point something out just before we wrap up. Um, is I, I, for whatever reason, I, I listened to a little bit of a review of episode one of season one, and I said to this to Connor when I when I noticed this. Um, but way back in episode one of season one, I was talking about how the the stranger, yes, his older Jonas before we knew who he was. The stranger's like uh, jacket was very reminiscent of Jonas's jacket. that were just different colors, and I I, I saw I heard myself say that and started laughing because I'm like, oh, man, I'm a genius. I'm a genius. Yeah, now, yeah. admittedly, I also thought the stranger was the one kidnapping the kid, so I wasn't right about everything. But I was it's making... funny because I think I think it was episode one of this season just now. We were talking about how we guess a lot of things to the point where sometimes it gets to the end and it reveals things, and we forgot that we'd guessed that. Yes. Case in point. <laughs> yeah, because the, the one I always remember is I, 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 
it wasn't even so much a guess as I, I just kind of worked out that Mikkel became Michael. I kind of had that moment, and it was it wasn't even when I was watching it. It was when we were talking about because I remember it was like episode three because it was it was like the very next episode they actually properly revealed it. But yeah. the episode before that, I remember having this like eureka moment, and when we were talking that Mikkel was going to become Michael. Um, and I'll take you know I'll take points for that because I was I was quite proud of that realization at the time. Um, yeah. But that, that 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 in episode one talking about Jonah uh, in the stranger and I didn't even say that they're the same person. I was just pointing out that there were some thematic links between them, and then obviously but th- those thematic links became the same goddamn person. They did, they did before it started pulling this uh, constantly. So maybe we need to go and look at what Adam's wearing and seeing if we can compare right. it to anyone. So I, I am going to make a a, a, a kind of wacky prediction, but it's something at this point I'm expecting from this show. Okay, someone is going to be their own grandparent. I'm saying it. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah. I'm, uh, sounds stupid. But I think it is very plausible on this show. It's happening. Someone's becoming their own be grandparent. Just yet another perfect loop. Yep. Uh, and what happens when the loop is broken? <laughs> <laughs> Do both people just... Well, not both people, but certainly the person who well, went back. The thing and... is, when the loop breaks, it still has to surely continue from where it is there. It can't have never happened. Sure. So the person is still let. Let's just say, hypothetically, pick a character. <laughs> any character it doesn't really matter. Let, let's just just for the sake of saying Jonas. Let's just say it was Jonas, even though we know it's not. Okay. Like, let's say Jonas. You know, he lived up his life. He becomes the stranger, right? And then he goes back. And you know has you know has Mikkel right you know, right the, you know again this is all bullshit obviously but just for the sake of this that's still okay then the loop is broken that still all happened and Jonas older Jonas just lives out from there surely mm. so it doesn't it doesn't undo the loop necessarily. Well, it depends depending how on sh- where they are in it. It depends how the show plays it. I mean, they, they might treat it as no, like everything since the loop started becomes undone, kind of thing. Or they might... could do. I think it depends when in the loop they undo it. Because if they do it right at the end of the loop, most of it's still played out and it breaks. Where and it just won't start again. I, no, I'm kind of half expecting like a, just for for comics fans, like a crisis level thing where reality just changes because uh, it's it's possible they've yeah. messed with everything. Um, because actually that was the other thing before before I got to know as uh, Agnes's brother, I for a second thought it might be the husband that she's run away from. I never went down that route because of the very specific you know the family, blood uh, linked by blood. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was just said linked by blood. I threw it out. I think, but I think for a split second, I I, I considered that oh wait, her and Tronti ran from whoever the Tronti's father was. Um, yeah. But so Trante's father's probably going to end up being Jonas. So I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> not out of the realms of possibility. No, nah, probably not, because we have, we have middle aged Jonas in present day, and he doesn't seem abusive. But I mean, we'll see. Yet, <laughs> yet, yeah. Maybe he'll go mad with uh, present day stuff. I don't know. Uh, but that is episode three of Dark Dark Season Two. Um, so we will see you for episode four. Uh, hopefully without Connor delaying anything. Uh, but that is that is us. So thank you once again for for watching or listening. Uh, you can support the show on Patreon, patreoncom slash TV. If you want to support us, you can do that over there. But for as little as one dollar per month, um, and every patron, of course, uh, gets some perks from that. Uh, but you also work us towards goals and a lot of new content for everyone. Uh, so go and have a look and see what's there. Um, and check out other things we've done. Uh, you know, other time travel stuff. I know in a about a week week and a half's time uh the yeah, sci-fi movie podcast we do uh, the episode's gonna be about primer which might appeal to you <laughs> if you're watching reviews about dark uh, i mean that might theoretically be just around the time where we finish the season so it may be actually is, hey yeah you had a few days off here's a very movie similar thing yeah yeah so yeah i look forward to primer um i mean primer, actually for patrons actually you get it this week it'll be this thursday for patrons but uh, everyone else next week on thursday uh but that is us so thank you once again for watching and listening we always appreciate it keep watching tv guys have you got any vanilla <laughs>